We're at the home of Dennis Day, whose uh, name is so very well known to uh, anybody who ever listened to a radio program, watched a television show, or um, heard a beautiful tenor sing. How are you today? I'm fine, Chuck. Uh, I guess you're referring to the Geritol set, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, we're talking about anybody uh, who likes good entertainment. Uh huh. Well, I mean, say, uh, those who might remember radio when I started with Jack Benny. Uh, back in 1940, so that's... Uh, was it 1940? 1940, actually. It was when I went with Jack on radio, and I stayed with him. I never expected it would last, and I was with Jack for 25 years on radio and television and associated with him up until he passed away. Uh, so that would be a period of about 35 years. That's a long run. That's a long run. That's a long run. <laughs> it's been a very wonderful career, thanks to Jack, who made it possible. And, uh, you know, I actually uh, was out of college when I started with Jack. I was only out of college a short while. And I really started at the top, which was uh, quite a challenge to me. But Jack was the one who took the chance. And, well, what uh, had you been doing before you uh, started working? Well, I graduated from Manhattan College, and I'd always loved singing. I was president of the Manhattan College Glee Club, and I had done... Uh, uh, several appearances on a local uh, radio show with Larry Clinton and his orchestra. I was one of those for, picked from the, about six or seven metropolitan colleges and universities to represent Manhattan College, where I went to school. And I was on the, this program for about three times. Now, after I graduated from college, I intended to go into law school because I thought I'd make law a vocation and singing an avocation. I never expected I'd be able to make a living at it. But uh, I was prevented from going into law school because I had an operation. And while I was recuperating, I started singing around local radio shows in uh, New York City. And uh, Kenny Baker left the uh, Jack Benny show, and uh, someone suggested I send over an acetate of a couple of songs I'd done on uh, some of the local radio stations on WHN and uh, CBS. So I did, and by good fortune, Mary Livingston happened to hear the record, and she liked the record. She saw my picture and all, and brought it to Chicago to Jack. He came in and auditioned me, and that was the start of the whole thing. They gave me a round-trip ticket to come out to California and audition out here, which I did. And then about two weeks before the program went back on the air, after the summer hiatus, mm -hmm. uh, Jack signed me to a contract. It was a five-year contract with a two-week option. If I didn't make good in two weeks, uh, he had the option to drop me. Then in the first year, it was for every 13 weeks, so they would pick me up after the first two weeks for the next 11. Then it was every 13 weeks, and um, I stayed with them, as I say, for the full mm -hmm. five years. And then I went into the Navy in World War II, spent two years in the Navy, and then when I got out of the Navy, I went back with Jack, and I had my own radio show at the same time for Colgate, a day mm -hmm. in the life of mm -hmm. Dennis Day. That went on for five years. And then I uh, crossed over into television. I had my own TV show for about three years. Weren't you working with Cliff Arquette yes, on we had that show? Yes, Cliff uh -huh. Arquette, uh, Charlie Weaver. Uh -huh. Yes, that's my boy, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we used to have a great, a lot of fun. And uh, I was sorry to see Cliff pass away here last year. But I guess that, uh, as the old saying a good friend of mine says, he's never seen anyone go out of this life alive. <laughs> so I guess right. it has to happen to all of us sooner or later. Jack was a great loss when he passed away because, it, you know, you never thought of him as an older man. Mm -hmm. He always looked so good. He thought so young. He was always uh, full of ideas of what he was going to do, where he was going. Uh, six months before he passed away, my daughter Eileen was married, and we sent him an invitation. My daughter sent him an invitation to the wedding. He wasn't able to make the wedding, uh, the church wedding, but he did come out to the reception here at my home. He said, I'll be there, and sure enough, mm -hmm. he was out here and spent about two hours visiting, and uh, then he had to go to another wedding reception. He was leaving that night mm -hmm. to up to Portland to do a concert, and then on to Seattle to do another concert, and then over to Spokane. But uh, this man was a very thoughtful, very kind, and very generous man, contrary to the the character that mm -hmm. he was portrayed as. 
it was a great loss because nobody thought of him uh, getting ill. You know, there was some talk, talk about him not feeling well. And uh, everyone thought, well, because Jack always uh, took excellent care of himself. He had a physical twice a year. Mm -hmm. And then he was doing a concert in uh, Houston, I believe it was, or Dallas, rather. And uh, just before going out on the stage, he, was, he got a seizure, uh, cramps in the stomach, and his arm went dead. So they thought it might be a slight stroke, but they examined him, and there was no such thing. But actually, what, as a few months went on, they finally found what it was. And, uh, of course, it's very insidious. He had cancer of the pancreas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And fortunately, he didn't suffer very much. He went very fast. But uh, I think the whole nation and the world was shocked when it happened because nobody expected him. Yes, you, you think know. a man like that is immortal. Yes, he yeah. well, he was a national institution. Yeah. I never heard anyone have a bad word to say about Jack Benny. Everyone always loved him. And he was a very kind and very gentle man. This is what's on his tomb. Uh, here lies a gentle man, which, which epitomizes mm -hmm. really what Jack Benny was, a very kind and gentle man. Did you find him that way on that first Jack Benny show? Oh, that yes, you did? yeah, because, you know, I was scared stiff. Uh -huh. uh, after all, I'd had no, no great experience as far as uh, singing is concerned with orchestras or appearing on... Here is the top radio show in the whole mm -hmm. country, and everyone was listening, so I was just very nervous and very scared, and, and I think that's what, why they brought in Verna Fel Felton, who played the part of my mother. Mm -hmm. It was a buffer between myself and Jack until I got more confidence mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. on the show. So they used her in the first year, I would say, about probably 16 shows. And then finally I started to get a little more confidence well, in myself. She was, she was on that quite a bit over the years. Though, yes, as, well, as they referred mother, to her huh? many times. She uh -huh. wasn't even on the show, but mm -hmm. Jack would refer to her, oh, your mother, you know, and I might say <laughs> something about she wants me to get a raise or uh, she was always, a, 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 you know, either a plumber's helper mm -hmm. or a carpenter. She was a woman who could do anything. And uh, he would refer to her many times, or I would. And it it felt like a living presence was on mm -hmm. the, on the show. He was partial to tenors uh, before you came. Oh yes, in, he uh, had Kenny Baker, and before that he had. Uh, well, actually, between Kenny Baker and myself, he tried uh, Michael Bartlett for a few shows. Mm -hmm. Wasn't Frank Parker? And with Frank him Parker at one was point? on for uh -huh. about five years when mm -hmm. Jack first started in radio, back in the Canada Dry uh, Ginger uh -huh. Ale, uh, were, were his sponsor at the time. Mm -hmm. Why so, the tenor? Why why not a uh, well, I guess baritone. he liked uh, yeah. tenors, and uh, it was good for him, I think, for the characters, too, mm -hmm. that he created. See, Kenny Baker took over Mary Livingston's character, the kind of silly, naive type mm -hmm. of thing, and then I had to perpetuate that same thing after Kenny Baker left the show. So I would talk, yes, Mr. Benny, who, me? Oh, yes, please, and, <laughs> you know, the... Uh, uh, the silly, naive kid, you know. It's <laughs> like when I went in Chicago, I went swimming in Lake uh, Michigan, and when I came out, everybody on the beach was laughing. And he says, well, what were they laughing at, your trunks? And I said, oh, trunks! <laughs> and we used to have these running things, you know, oh, whatever it would be, <laughs> all through the years. And uh, that was the fun part of it. Uh, of course, it was a character that I played, and I guess I was, even though I was born and raised in New York City, mm -hmm. I think the uh, I'd never been west of the Hudson, uh, been to uh -huh. Ireland with my aunt, uh -huh. uh, who took me over when I got out of high school, and uh, but I'd never been out west, so I was pretty green, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, behind the ears, uh, I didn't know very much, and I think I was more or less a part of the character that really uh, I portrayed uh -huh. on the Jack Benny show. Well, it was a great character, and um, oh, yes. everybody and enjoyed it. They started stuff. taking advantage of, uh, after a while, and when I got more confidence, of, I used to do dialects during World War II. I used to do Rommel popping out of a tank, and, uh, ah, so, you know, Japanese, arigatou gozaimasu, do itashimashite, oh, you bet you. And we do all kinds of dialects and uh, impressions. I did Parker Fenley. Uh, from the Fred Allen, uh, howdy, bub, uh, you know, <laughs> all of these various characters, uh, and then Mel Blanc was on the show. You had a field day with the, with the show, actually. Oh, yes, you, could, yeah. you did a lot, uh, and what was really interesting to me, as I remember those shows and listen to some of them, you, um, you could be as silly 
as possible yes, on the show. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, Jack would say, sing, Dennis. And you'd sing a good song. And you'd sing, sing Granada or right. into a straight thing. And, and the public would accept yeah. it. Yeah, that was a phenomenon that really, uh, it's, it's hard to explain it, but they did separate the two. The fact that you could mm-hmm. have a, a good singing voice and uh, then play a naive, silly kid. You know, uh, <laughs> kind of stupid in, in a sense. But uh, the public always separated that fact. When you say, sing, kid, and then after the song, yeah. you go back, back into the same <laughs> thing. But actually, all of us, like Rochester, Phil Harris, Don Wilson, we only had about a page and a half of dialogue on the show. But you better believe that it was the best dialogue mm-hmm. that possibly could be written. Because Jack knew it was good for himself and for all of the characters on the show. And no matter how many laughs, he was very happy with all the laughs you might get. And uh, at, when the show was over, many people would say, hey, did you hear Dennis or did you hear Phil Harris on the Jack Benny show last mm-hmm. night? It was still the Jack Benny show because he was the catalyst who manipulated mm-hmm. the whole thing. The jokes bounced off of him. He was the butt of most of the jokes. And we got the laughs, but it's still... He uh, was a genius in that sense. In many cases, a, a show would get well underway before he would even make an appearance That's on true, it. yeah. That's very true. And then he had a, a great facility of mentioning something. You know, I wonder where, uh, where I put that book or something mm-hmm. like that or where Dennis would be or what did he, what, whatever's going to happen. And all of a sudden... When we were practically to the end of the show, that would come in in another roundabout way <laughs> that made a hilarious uh, ending to the whole thing. He had that great facility. So he was really, in the early days when I was with Jack, he used to write, uh, work with the writers on all the mm-hmm. ideas and the dialogue and everything else. And then when we'd come in to read, uh, usually on a Wednesday or a Thursday, we'd have our first reading. And after the reading was over, we'd leave and go home, and then they would edit it and tighten it up. And my gosh, every time, that every script would be 200% better once uh, they worked it mm-hmm. over. And Jack mm-hmm. would work, says, I don't like this, I don't like this, we've got to replace this, or bring in you know, new dialogue, mm-hmm. or let's keep this, and this worked mo- fine. But he was a great editor of scripts. This is one of the... the great sense of comedy that the Mm -hmm. man had not only was uh, an editor but what a timer a master timer he knew how to milk how long to milk a laugh and when to stop when uh, he had enough or the public had enough the audience and uh, this was a great thing about him and you know now uh, how many other comedians are there around or coming up that have that same facility so it it was an era Mm -hmm. I guess someday somebody will write Uh, a book about the era, you know, that we went through, Mm -hmm. um, through the 30s all the way up into the 50s, the early 50s, when radio was in its heyday, because everything was uh, gone over the airwaves, you know, it was sound, and everyone could imagine what a person looked like, Mm -hmm. what a situation looked like, in their own minds, by sound effects and by the person's voice. You know, people used to think I was a Oh, I get two two different kinds of um, comments on what I look like. People who hadn't seen me, they say, "Well, one would say I was a tall, about six feet, with uh, blonde hair and the hayseed coming out of my ears," <laughs> or the other s- would say, "Well, he's short and fat," and, <laughs> you know. So that, these were the two opposites. But each person who uh, listened to radio. Uh, formed his own image of what he wanted you to look like or what he thought you looked like or the situation and sound effects. I think that would make a rather interesting study and an interesting book. You know? Well, that's because the listener participated. So yes. Uh-huh. He had to supply the picture. And that he had to. added and to the staying and power. The, of and that. the sound effects uh-huh. were all important. I know Jack had a great sense of that. Uh, many a time where it was a slap in the face. I remember once uh, he was trying to get the sound effect man to make the... the proper sound it just mm-hmm. didn't come and he kept no no that that's not it and by george when the sound effect man finally hit it, it was the right sound effect of the slap in the face mm-hmm. and jack says that's it you knew instinctively yourself and listening that he was absolutely right this is a, a tremendous thing he was very meticulous about his sound effects well you take the vault 
mm -hmm. that he had, mm -hmm. all those tremendous sound effects with the chains and the alligators, in, which <laughs> created in your own mind uh, what the vault in his cellar was. Uh, it was just amazing. I don't think you can really translate that. They tried, uh, came off very well, but I don't think it had the same impact as it did in radio uh, when they tried to TV, when yeah. they put it into TV. Did you have? Um, uh, did you offer any anything to the Benny radio show that uh, that wasn't in the script? In other words, were, was it a likely thing that you, you or to Phil or Dennis? Well, ad lib or add add bits of business to well, it that were incorporated. Sometimes into you it. might, you know, mm -hmm. you, but you better be sure that <laughs> you know what you were doing. <laughs> uh, Phil would ad lib quite a bit, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Jack was a great audience. He just mm -hmm. absolutely, if something was really funny, he'd fall right down on the floor. He was just amazing. Well, you mean literally he would fall on the floor? Well, uh, he'd just break up. Uh -huh. I'm I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> everything. He'd just break up uh -huh. and almost throw the script away and uh -huh. just put his head down and laugh and uh, just absolutely say, oh, that is funny. Oh, my gosh, you know. <laughs> say. He, just, he was a great audience. Mm -hmm. and uh, But we didn't do very much ad-libbing, you know, because you had a time structure mm -hmm. in there. The show had to be off, and lots of times uh, uh, the audience may laugh a lot longer than we uh, mm -hmm. expected they would. So... You had to get those commercials in. That was the important yeah. thing. And, of course, Jack was the first one to do the integrated commercials way back in the 30s by uh, Jell-O again. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we went from there to Grape Nuts. And then we went in, uh, to uh, LS, MFT, Lucky Strike, Green has gone to war yeah. and all <laughs> of that. But he always integrated the commercials as part of the program. One show that stands out in my memory... Uh, was one where the the sportsmen uh, this is a storyline the sportsmen were um, uh, were getting mad because the jack wasn't paying him enough money and so it was you and uh, Bing Crosby and I think Andy Russell oh, yes, and yes. Uh, maybe uh -huh. it was Dick Hames and Dick Hames yeah uh -huh. and that's when Crosby said who picked this key Dennis Day yeah, right. <laughs> yeah and then also another time he says hey Dennis you better get down where the money is because <laughs> here I was with uh, three baritones <laughs> yeah there was a lot of fun on those on those shows it, it really was, was yeah. fun for the audience and and we could listen and feel that everybody on your side of the microphone was having a good time. Yeah, too. well, you went there. You you enjoyed it. You know, you, we didn't rehearse a great deal mm -hmm. because uh, comedy loses its spontaneity mm -hmm. if you do. You know, then it becomes too rote and planned. And Jack didn't want to do that. Never rehearsed a, a great deal. You may have one or two readings at most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it it had that sense. I uh, always uh, got a great charge out of going to the Jack Benny rehearsals and the shows itself because you knew you were going to have fun and everybody did enjoy themselves and there was no uh, animosity among any of us you know we weren't jealous of one another we all got along just absolutely great we all got your star spot on the show that's i mean right. you really got had a good feature that's right yeah, everyone got his uh, his mm -hmm. uh, feature spot and you know the material was the greatest mm -hmm. did you have to uh, uh did you rehearse uh, or when you were a show was going on on sunday for example where did, when did it start for you as, as an actor and a singer on the show? Did uh, it start well, I'd start Thursday or Friday? I, I'd start at least on Wednesday because mm -hmm. I'd have to get with the arranger, pick out the song, talk to Jack and Mary and whatever suggestions they might have as far as the so song is concerned. I'd make my suggestions. Then we'd have to get with the arranger as far as key and the routine, and then he'd have to make the arrangement. Then the next time I came in, uh, for a rehearsal with the orchestra was on a Sunday morning, usually around 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I got there, and the cast would probably arrive around uh, 11.30, 12 o'clock. But I would rehearse with the orchestra mm -hmm. in my period of time, uh, usually then on Sunday morning. And that's uh, after I'd rehearsed once or twice, and that was all. Because he'd send the orchestra home. He never, I mean, out. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack would never let the orchestra sit there to hear the, the rehearsal of the oh, comedy. Oh, really? No, because he wanted them to hear it as, for the first time as well as the audience sitting in the audience and the people at home listening to their radios. That's why mm -hmm. he loved, you know, Frank Remley. They always put a, uh, a <laughs> microphone under uh -huh. Frank Remley because Frank was a great audience and he had a, an infectious laugh. Uh -huh. 
And uh, he'd break up at anything that Jack or any of us <laughs> would say. So you see, they kept the spontaneity there by mm -hmm. uh, dismissing the orchestra. And the first time they heard what was uh, going on as far as the show is concerned, mm -hmm. they'd rehearse their cues for the bridges and yeah. things like that. But uh, they didn't hear any of the comedy at all. And it was evident. We, we yes, could hear uh -huh. that everybody was really, really with it. It seemed to me that Don Wilson always was, you could almost always hear Don Wilson's laugh. On, yes, on yes. The well, he had a big, hearty laugh. But it sounded, I mean, he must have, he was part of the action in much of it. Yes. And he must have been going through the rehearsal of it, yet his laugh just sounded like he had heard this for the first time. That's he right. Yeah, well, like we, as I said, we, don't, we didn't rehearse mm -hmm. it that, very, uh, that much, so you, it was almost like new to you. Yeah. And uh, I think you got, all, all of us got involved in it and got carried away with it, you know, and enjoyed yeah. it. You that probably enjoyed the audience's reaction to right. it as well. Yeah, yeah, because many times you didn't know you were going to get that big a laugh, or may, uh, lots of th times you would say, well, gee, this should get a tremendous laugh, mm -hmm. and maybe it didn't get the laugh that you thought it would. <laughs> so uh, it was, uh, no two audiences ever are alike mm -hmm. anyway, you know. Did yeah. you have to uh, do a second show? We did in the beginning until mm -hmm. uh, actually uh, we did a second show until after the war. Mm -hmm. The first five years I was with them, we did one for the West Coast and then one for the uh, uh, the East Coast. Mm -hmm. You know, that was at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, which would be 6 o'clock Chicago right. and then uh, 7 in New York. Then we'd come back and do one for the West, entire West Coast at 8.30 at night. So At 8.30? Yes, mm -hmm. 8.30 on Sunday night. And... Uh, we do that show that, at that time, so it wasn't until after the war that uh, Bing Crosby, I think, was the first one who started right. with, with mm -hmm. the tape, and uh, that's when we did uh, go. Actually, well, it wasn't tape then; it was acetate. Mm -hmm. Still, you mm -hmm. know, they didn't perfect that. But until they started permitting the recording. They of permitted the recording of it and the replaying of it. You mm -hmm. know, so we didn't have to do a live show twice. Did you? Um, did you lose this, the uh, surprise element with the orchestra then on the second show? <laughs> you must have. Well, a little bit. Uh, uh, they Jack would change the uh, script slightly. Oh, he would? Yeah. Uh -huh. He would change some of the gags that didn't go, mm -hmm. or if uh, uh, something needed uh, punching up, they would change it. So it was slightly different. So the West Coast might have heard a better show. Yeah, and then yeah. also uh, Fred Allen would come on between the first and the se you know the second show, so we would he, Jack would have comment about it, Allen what he said see it uh, oh, on the yeah. second show, so that made a little difference too. That was a lot of fun uh, getting yes. involved in all of that. Oh yes, yes, yeah. There was a time when the whole Benny cast. Uh, did a spoof of the Fred Allen show, and I think it might have been in the same period of time. Then the Fred Allen show. Did they the, did the same. The yes. same thing at the right. uh -huh. It was great fun. It must have been. It really worked for the audience. It did, it, yeah, because uh, Phil, I think he did the Kenny Delmar, you know, mm -hmm. Senator Claghorn. Somebody I say, somebody knock, you know. And, <laughs> and uh, you did the Parker Fenley. Yeah, uh, and then I do the Parker Fenley. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. When uh, it was after the war and into the late forties, then when you. Uh, you got your own show. I had, yes. I started in 1946, and that went through uh, the season of 1951. So I had it for five years. And uh, then Jack continued in radio till mm -hmm. 1954, and then they reran uh, a lot of them in, during the, the season of 1955. But then he went on to television. He switched mm -hmm. over to TV. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with him until 1964. Uh, on TV when he had his regular show. After that, then he did specials. Now, you had, uh, while you were doing the Benny show, you did the A Day in the Life of Dennis Day, right. and Phil Harris was doing the, I guess it was the Fitch bandwagon, or at least... Yes, uh, he was doing Fitch, and then he had his own show. The Rexall, uh, yes. uh, Rexall Phil and Alice. Phil and Alice, uh-huh. And yes. Jack had no uh, problems with that, with you? No, no. Uh... It was understood at the time, you know. So he that's one of the things about Jack. He would come on my show or, uh, you know, to help plug it or anything mm -hmm. like that. And he'd refer to it many times on the Jack Benny show. Oh, you got your own show and all of this sort mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, when he moved from NBC to CBS, Phil didn't go with him. And that's when Phil was terminated as far mm -hmm. as the Jack Benny radio shows were concerned. And then they brought in uh, Bob Crosby. Right, yeah. 
So, uh, and I th he stayed with it until the show was terminated at the uh, 1954. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then in, into TV. Now, once Dennis Day got on uh, television in front of the cameras, there did the the people who thought that you were uh, tall and uh, and lean or short and fat uh, were they? Uh, no, I never got any. Uh, how did they react? <laughs> I never got any uh, adverse reaction. You know, they still accepted it that I could be silly and everything else with Jack, and uh, uh, it, it it worked out fine. That show that you did uh, on TV was that that was RCA Victor. Yeah, I was on. My sponsor was RCA Victor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I was live for the first year, and a year and a half, and then uh, the last year uh, we were on film. But of course, that was a kiss of death. I went uh, opposite. They put me on opposite. I love Lucy, which oh. was the number one <laughs> yeah. show in the entire country, and I just couldn't get a rating at all, and so that was the end of that. And then Cliff uh, Arquette went on with uh, Jack Parr and stayed with him for quite a few years. And then shortly before his death, he was on the Hollywood Squares. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Uh, during all of this time, you um, occasionally popped up on the uh, the big screen on uh, the motion picture. Yeah, screen. I did a, a couple of pictures at 20th Century Fox and RKO. And Weren't you with the... Um, was there a Buck Benny movie? Uh, yeah, that was the first one I was uh, on when I first came out here, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, to join Jack Benny, and that was the first picture mm -hmm. I uh, was in was Buck Benny Rides Again. So uh, I've had a, a very varied and uh, w a wonderful career. What are you doing these days? Well, I do uh, personals. Uh, I'll be going to Anaheim uh, on the 21st of this month, to San Diego on the 24th. Then I've got to go to a fair in Washington. Mm -hmm. And I've got a commercial running for Special K right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be going into Chicago uh, on the uh, 26th to visit uh, the craft people and uh, do a little thing there. So I just managed to keep busy. You went did a little bit of um, uh, theatrical stuff too, haven't you? Yes, I've done theaters, uh, summer, summer theater, a lot of uh, theater in the round. Mm -hmm. I did a whole year with uh, No No Nanette, with mm -hmm. the first national company, with uh, June Allison, and uh, I toured with that for a full year. And I do uh, theaters, uh, I've done Brigadoon, I played the, melody, the old Melody Top in mm -hmm. Chicago and in Milwaukee. So... Uh, between everything else, I managed to keep quite busy. My wife is in, has an antique and a gift business in Santa Monica, so when I'm on the road, I'm her picker. I uh, oh. I love to <laughs> pick out antiques, you know, mm -hmm. and find little goodies here and there. No, I can't put one over on you then. Uh, you know all about the. Uh... Oh, I've been studying. You learn. You make <laughs> mistakes. You know, you really do. But uh, you also find some nice things. And, that's always been a hobby of mine for mm -hmm. years all mm -hmm. since, since I've been with Jack Benny. But uh, now we're kind of making it a business as well. So it's a lot of fun. You've had a lot of fun all through the years, haven't oh, you? Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. keep busy. And of course, I have to when you have ten kids, you know. Ten kids. I've got five married and uh, five at home. I'm a grandfather five times. So. Uh, well, it not it couldn't be that... Uh, that young Dennis Day with the tenor voice, a, a grandfather oh, yes. five times. Yeah, <laughs> five times. So we're all getting old. <laughs> You're not getting George. old. You just get better, I guess. Uh, Thank you very much for uh, all of your uh, your radio days and the TV things that you've done. We've em enjoyed them, uh, and we've enjoyed chatting with you today. Thank Dennis you very Day. much, Chuck. It's Thank been you. great.